Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I have a sublimation project featuring the Artist Spree Blank of the Month, which is a set of two patches that are three inches in diameter. These are fun because you can create your custom design and there's even adhesive on the back so you can then attach it or adhere it to whatever you'd like, maybe a little tote bag, a book bag, um, you know, a little pouch, anything. So I've also pulled in some Artist Brie ink pads, masking fluid, a die set, and some pouncers to do some ink blending with. And what I'm going to do today for my patches um, are galaxy backgrounds. A little bit of an experiment. Um, in my head, I feel like this would work. <laughs> so, but I have to admit, I've never done it before sitting down to film this. So, um, so I'll just spoiler alert, everything worked out great. <laughs> Otherwise, you would not be seeing this video. <laughs> so I started off by tracing out my patch onto some clear acetate. I'm going to use that later as a little preview window when I go to pick out the portion of the galaxy that I want to sublimate onto my blank. But before I get to that point, I need to um, make myself a background and I'm actually going to do this as a full eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock so that I, if I'm going to do this, I definitely, especially if it turns out well, I definitely want to have extra galaxy because I'm going to galaxy sublimate the, this galaxy onto as many things as I can. <laughs> um, but what I'm starting off with, this looks very underwhelming, but this is the Liquitex masking fluid that I have on my acrylic block and I'm just splattering it, um, just tapping it onto my cardstock here. This is a lightweight cardstock. It's 65 pound. But the reason why I'm not using just plain old copy paper is because the Artist Spree ink is very juicy. Those ink pads are super juicy and they soak through copy paper so quickly. It's going to really saturate that very, very fast. So I want something a little bit heavier weight so that I can do a little bit of blending, but more importantly, I can layer a lot of ink. What I've learned with galaxy backgrounds, and I've done galaxies with um, oxide inks, with watercolor markers, with a variety of different things, sprays, shimmer sprays, for example. Um, but this was the first time I'm using the Artist Spray ink pads to blend a galaxy background. And with everything else, and, and it, um, it remains to be true for these inks as well, the key is that in the beginning, it's not going to look great, <laughs> but when you layer more colors on, when you start to introduce the darker colors, that's when the galaxy really starts to look um, a lot better. And then when you splatter the white of the stars, then it really comes to life. And so you kind of just have to be patient with it and, and work with it. But that's why I wanted to use something a little bit more uh, heavier weight than just plain old copy paper because I need this paper to be able to take a lot of ink. I need to be able to um, blend on it. And admittedly, um, I'm using these pouncers, which are meant more for up and down pouncing and not circular blending. But because I had already used these for a different sublimation um, project, because you don't want to mix your inks. You don't want to use a blending brush that you've used with your dye inks or your pigment inks and then go to use them with your sublimation inks, unless you're in the habit of cleaning them um, after every use. Uh, so I might need to actually invest in a dedicated set of blending brushes for circular blending. Uh, I would definitely recommend that uh, because you can see on my background here, I have some very circular shapes um, in the ink. I'm, I'm trying to do a little bit of circular motion, but um, just to smooth things out, just to blend things out a little bit. But... Um, 
but this is one of the things that you just have to take your time with. And you want that contrast. You want some areas to be very, very dark, but you want to leave some areas almost a little bit still white because that helps to give it that sort of nebula look, uh, the sort of gaseous look. So leaving some areas that are still a little bit white is perfectly fine. And you can see I keep on going over with more ink in the same areas, just over and over again, blending um, where there's black. I'm going in with some of my darker colors, like the blues and the purples, just to give that black a little bit more dimension um, to have things fade into each other, blend into each other a little bit better. And and it's a process. It's just a process. You just kind of have to keep at it. It's not going to look um, great every step of the way. And even at this point, it doesn't look fabulous. But here's a close up of how that masking fluid looks. Now I'm going to start to remove it and removing it's really easy. I've just got this gum eraser that I, you could use your finger to rub it off, but this, this, um, this panel is fully dried. It's just that you, you still might get like an, a bit of an inky mess. Um, because you'll see my eraser picks up some of the ink, but look at that difference. See how once I rub away that, um, uh, masking fluid, that bright white of the cardstock, pops through. And then when you see me start to remove the rest of this, this galaxy background t starts to look a little bit better than, than um, how it looks right now. The stars definitely help to sell it. And so it's not until the whole thing is kind of done and on your project that you know everything really starts to look um, as it should. Um, even at this point, I would say this also doesn't look the best, um, but this isn't meant to be like a full piece, full, you know, piece of art that's, that is meant to be framed just like this. Um, so it looks very blotchy, but this is why I've got this acetate preview window here so that I can kind of move it around my background and pick out the area that I think looks nice on this scale of project. And so I've got, um, I did think about uh, adding more to this, um, but I'll actually add the um, mask to the second patch that, that I create. So for that one, I'm gonna leave plain and I'm going to kind of preview out another area here and I'm going to add this moon. This moon I've die cut out of a Spellbinders die set from some masking paper. And the effect of this, you could actually use, Artist Breed does have a masking tape. So you could try using that. Uh, I didn't think about it at the time, so I just grabbed for my masking paper. But the idea of this is that the masking paper will prevent the ink from sublimating onto my blank because it's basically a um, a layer that's going to block the ink from hitting my blank. And so now that I've got the two um, spots that I've picked out and my blanks are taped to it, I want to put it in between some protective uh, paper and I create a little sandwich but then also when I take it to my heat press I have some more protective paper underneath and a, and a layer on top because what happens when you apply heat to this is that that ink will turn from a solid ink to a uh, gaseous state and then it's going to permeate into the polyester um, uh, material of the blank. And then it's, as it cools, it's going to become a, a part of this blank, a permanent part of this blank. So I've got my, I peeled it back a little just to peek at it to see if it had transferred enough to my liking and it, it looks great. So I took it out and then I um, pressed my second one. And so here's the big reveal. So you can kind of see, especially with um, sublimation ink, it's 
it's going to be hard to tell if it looks good because um, the ink looks a little bit different on the paper before it's been sublimated. So you can look how dark the black area is. On the cardstock, it, it didn't look very dark, but once it transferred, all of the colors just look so much more um, bright and saturated. So that's another thing to kind of keep in mind, especially with uh, when you're doing galaxy backgrounds with your sublimation inks is that it might look a little bit dull, a little bit underwhelming to start when it's on the cardstock. But once, once that transfers, it's going to, um, create this really, uh, vibrant effect. And a lot of that has to do with the quality of the blanks, the quality of the inks themselves. So the combination of using the artist brief blanks with their stamps will, um, with their stamp pads will definitely give you great results every time. So here's the one where I added the little mask of the moon. And so you can see this is another way to do masking in order to um, have the native color of your blank show through. So how fun is that? And so you can see on this small scale, when you take just a little snippet of the uh, galaxy background, it's very, it's a lot more interesting, really um, has a very cool effect to it. I can't wait to make some mugs, some coasters with the rest of that background and, and to make more backgrounds as well. Thanks for joining me on this one. And until next time, happy crafting and have a fabulous day. Bye.